Hey guys, Scott from phasingplayer.com here. Looking to unbox this game that just arrived at my doorstep mere minutes ago. Cryptic Explorers from Tempest Tome Games. This has been a long time coming. I believe this project has been in development in some capacity for like five or six years. Uh, it's finally finished though. This is like the third iteration of the game. Finally is a real product. And I figured I just got it. I should open it on camera. Open the whole Kickstarter uh, package. It's got the, uh, the core game, the Alpha Return expansion, the neoprene player mats, the deluxe pieces, the, um, the uh, goddess bust, the resin bust, uh, and even the cassette, which um, I, I might be playing this music over the top of this video as you are listening to it. I don't have a cassette player with which I can pull the audio off of this, but it is on Bandcamp. The whole album is on Bandcamp. And you can listen to it there. Uh, as uh, Just full disclosure, Tempest Tome were kind enough to provide me with this. So uh, anything I have to say about this game, be fully aware of where kind of my position comes from. Uh, this, I did not pay for this. This was, this was provided to me by the people at Tempest Tome. Uh, without further ado though, why don't we go ahead and get a top down and look at what's in here. All right, so here is the, uh, here's the core box. It is not, not too, too big, but it is very heavy. I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot to punch out in here. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is this is Cryptic Explorers. Nice, cool cover. Nice uh, illustrate il uh, illustration. I think is the word that they, that you use. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and cut it open. Take a look at the back. Look nicer, hopefully, with all this plastic covering it. All right, there's the cover. Does have a bit of a uh, UV treatment on the front, on the uh, the face and the logo. So it has some. Uh, some shininess you can kind of see here, and uh, it's otherwise very, very matte, very dark, which makes sense given the theme of the game. And yeah, here's the back, the reverse side, you got a picture of some of the characters, a bit of flavor text, two to four players, two to four hours, ages 13 plus. I'm guessing this is ages 13 plus and not that it has 13 plus dice in it. Uh, I believe it only uses D6s, not, not 13 types of dice. Uh, yeah, Tempest Tome Games is their first release. First release from Tempest Tome. It's a Kickstarter project. The uh, the third iteration of this game on Kickstarter. The first two did not fund, but they were very persistent. They they rejiggered the game a little bit and um, got a successful product out there. Comes with some extra baggies for storing stuff. As my wife will tell you, I already have too many empty baggies. And yes, she's nodding off camera. Uh, so here's some standard D6s, black and white, regular looking, rip them open. I actually don't mind getting some more D6s, I do have a bunch, but I find they're useful in some games for just counting things or keeping track of health or whatever else. So this game has a bunch, which is interesting. Um, I guess maybe it gives you a couple for each player. I have played this game extensively on Tabletop Simulator, and we really only ever used like two dice in there, but this game comes with a bunch, physical copy. Little standees, or little uh, little plastic stands for the standees. Looks like they'll probably bite down nicely on the uh, on the cardboard. Comes also in black and white. I'm guessing to help differentiate a little bit. A little uh, either different players. There's a clear one in here as well. Don't know what the sole clear one would be for, but um, yeah, black and white and uh, and crystal clear. To try putting them in here, see see if they uh, if they're loose or, or what when they're uh, holding characters. Another baggy. And here's looks like all of the um, all of the characters, all of the uh, the the character sheets as well as maybe monster sheets. Let's see what these are like. Yeah, these so these are the monsters that the goddess will use. Tomb guardians, crypt hounds, Gash Nordon. Bunch of different ones. Each each um, each goddess. So for I guess for those that don't really know about this game, it's got um, it's a like one versus many sort of game where you've got one player who plays as a goddess of death. There are there are I believe three in the in the core game, three different ones, uh, and the goddess of death is trying to thwart the other players, up to three other players, who are playing cryptonauts, trying to. Um, 
trying to steal knowledge from from the realms of death. And these monsters will be unique to to um, to each goddess. So one will use crypt hounds, tomb guardians, disciples that disciples of decays from someone else. I mixed these up. Um, Spectra fag fagi, um, and I think one other. But they each get unique monsters, and uh, they will have to use them in sort of a tactical, a tactical game, a uh, tactical war game a little bit, to um, either defeat the Cryptonauts, or if you are the Cryptonauts, to steal knowledge from death. So these are all, all the monsters in the game for the, the base goddesses. They're all different, they're all pretty unique. Um, every goddess has a different play style. This is a pretty good, pretty good stock. It's got a picture of the goddess on the back that they're tied to, and then the the dude on the front here. They have special abilities. It, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's reasonably thin stock, but they just sit on the table unmoving. And um, yeah, they're black. They'll probably get maybe some fingerprints. Eh, maybe not. Maybe not. It's always the worry with like solid black uh, uh, paper. If it's like just slightly too glossy, will it like show oil really easily? This is pretty matte. Um, I don't see, I washed my hands recently, so I don't really see any fingerprints on this right now, but maybe if I have greasy hands later, I'll give it another try. Rule book, uh, pretty, pretty big rule book. It's like 50 pages. Uh, okay, so this is definitely showing, this is definitely showing a little bit of scratches on it, but it's, it comes with the territory. It's just the way, the way black paper goes. Uh, it looks cool though, it's all black and white, which is another cool thing about this game, everything is black and white. And it's got little optional rules in the back. Decks of cards, looks like it's got three of them. These are going to be for uh, collecting the knowledge of death. That's what this deck is, knowledge of death to, um, to win the game with. As well as, it looks like, artifacts that the uh, Kryptonauts will collect to enhance their power as you play a game. Well, I'll rip these open in one second. Uh, this also looks like some uh, some cards for the goddesses. I think are some of the rest of these. They're maybe mixed up actually. I don't know that they're going to be as like I think I think they're all mixed up in here. So uh, let's open one up. See see what's in here. So they should peel open. Yeah. Uh, not bad cardstock. Feels about the same as um, as these. Feels nice. Looks nice again. This kind of really cool black and white, uh, black and white art style, similar to something like Cave Evil. If you're familiar with that. So yeah, these are all for one of the goddesses. Got some cats fighting in the background. Which, if you've watched my videos before, you know that that's very much a thing. Uh, these are all knowledge of death cards. They all have unique flavor text on them. Mechanically, they're identical. It's all just flavor text when you collect them, like kind of what you're learning, what you're collecting. Though, in, uh, I believe it is this, yeah, it's in this rule book, the Otherworldly Encounters, it actually has an optional rule for tying these specific Knowledge of Death cards to uh, uh, gameplay advantages and disadvantages, sort of like an, an event deck. I have used them. I have used that optional rule on Tabletop Sim. Uh, it's fun. It doesn't seem the most fleshed out, but I, I'm certainly uh, um, advising that you give it a try because I think I think it has some cool stuff in it. So yeah, these are all the uh, Knowledge of Death, the Goddess deck, and the Goddesses. They each have their own unique deck, and they have uh, a good number of cards, a good number of unique cards. Essentially, what they'll be doing is drawing a few each turn uh, and being able to use them to summon monsters to, to uh, buff their own monsters to be stronger or, or attack the Kryptonauts to, be, to weaken them. Um, they can also use them to just generate power that they can use to, to summon things. Again, each goddess is very different in how they play, and a big part of that is, is these cards. So I mentioned this before. This is the... Uh, you know, you'll, you have these three three rule books that come in here. You have the, the standard rule book that has the rules of the game, as you'd expect a rule book to. Uh, the realm book, which side by side they look really similar, uh, but this one says realm book instead of rule book. This has the rules for the different 
levels that you play. There are four, if I remember right, maybe six if you include the like small ones, the mini realms, sub realms. Uh, and this is how you like how you set it up, how you um, how you win, what you need to do, what the cryptonauts need to be doing. And then the rule book has the actual like how to play the game in it. And then there's the one that looks way different that I sort of quickly mentioned a second ago. The Otherworldly Encounters is a real, real cool piece of art on the front. Uh, this is full of optional rules. What does it say? An optional rules supplement for story-driven play. I believe this was like a stretch goal. Uh, I have played this with, with this actually quite a bit. It is neat. I, I, like I said, I feel like it could be fleshed out a little more. It's almost, it's almost asking for house rules and like fan, fan generated. Um, fan generated content uh, but it is cool it's got a lot of flavor text a lot of like lore and stuff in it and uh, yeah cool like campaign stuff I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be recording a review of this game at some point when I get some plays in of the physical game uh, I've played the tabletop sim version a lot and I just want a chance to play it with the real copy before I sit down and really formulate my thoughts uh, so these are all the standees for the monsters as well as the cryptonauts and it's what the little uh, stands are used for. So we can go ahead and cut this open. All right, so that's all of these. They are uh, pretty sturdy, pretty thick. This is my, this is I randomly chose the as if Tempest Tome guys are watching Xenobiologist number one. If you if you're playing the Kryptonauts, if you're playing on the Kryptonaut side and you want to win, play as the Xenobiologist. She's awesome. She's gonna lock in here. It's a pretty good hold. Doesn't uh, doesn't slip out. Something I find with a lot of games that use standees is these these plastic like bases don't always lock on. You can pick it up and it like easily falls off. But this uh, this seems to be doing well. Seems to be doing all right. Now I am aware of some um, some errata, and I believe. It is the demonologist that has two. Yeah, I see it in here. The uh, the demonologist is represented twice because one of these should be the um, sorry the demolitionist. See, I'm I'm doing it here. The demolitionist is represented twice. The demonologist should be one of these. I don't know if they have a plan right now to correct this, if they're gonna send out like stickers or just uh, you know ask you to print something yourself. I'll probably print my own sticker for the time being, but uh, yeah, demo demonologist, demolitionist, super similar names. Um, one of these should be the demonologist. So there's a bunch for the cryptonauts. I think there are like 34 cryptonauts, something like that. Uh, and then you have similar standees over here for the goddess monsters, the, uh, the, the creatures of the realms of death. Cryptowns and disciples of decay, fetal spores, um, all sorts of stuff. Uh, these look nice. These have cool art. They're very distinct from one another in, in, in most cases. I think some of them can maybe look a little similar, but generally, I mean, it's got the name. And I think you'll, you'll, you can pretty quickly figure out who's who uh, on, on, the, on the maps. It's also got tokens here for uh, for keeping track of health or who's knocked out, you know, that sort of thing. Some big pieces here for the map. If I remember right, there is also a piece of errata. This is posted on Kickstarter. There's a piece of errata for, yeah, this. Very minor. This one's super minor. I don't, I don't know if it'll ever even matter, but it's got a heart on one side and then it's got like a, a pentagram on the other instead of a heart on the other. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter, but it exists, uh, the, and I, it might be something they replace at some point. These all punch out really easily too. Just some are falling out by mistake right now, uh, which is good. You want that? It's more pieces, more pieces. Some some bigger ones for some of the goddesses. They have uh, slightly larger, slightly larger uh, monsters in their repertoire. It's Gash Norodon, who's part of a, a specific map. Yeah, these all look good though. These look great. Uh, and then the Realms of Death, of which there are, like I said, I believe four, but they are, uh, they're only on two maps. They're on double-sided maps. Uh, oh, and there are the sub-realms as well. So this is a sub-realm. It is smaller than the other ones, and it's got 
a separate one on the back. It's two separate sub realms that you can play. And these are for like two player play, doing a 1v1, or there are rules to use them as sort of auxiliary realms to the main, to the main board. Uh, and this has some UV treatment as well in the like white parts. Maybe you can see here, it's a little shiny in some areas. Which looks great. That's a very, uh, a very attractive uh, feature. And here would be one of the main boards. Not gonna be able to get all this easily on this shot that I have right now, but this one's upside down. Uh, looks really good. Honestly, I have, uh, looks better than the uh, the tabletop sim art. Um, there's like more contrast. I feel I feel there's the more um, more nuanced shades of gray and, and black. Uh, yeah, this looks really good. The board is is pretty good stock. It uh, seems like it unfolds pretty easily. I know sometimes you get boards that'll like sit sort of halfway unfolded and you have to overfold them to uh, to get it right. I, you know, I don't have a flat table here to lay it on, but it seems like it'll lay flat. Yeah, it looks great. All this white is like UV treated, so it's got sort of a glossiness to it. it stands out a little more against the others. So here's one realm and then it's got on the reverse it's got another another map on the back. Uh, and then you've got two of those. You've got this board and you've got this board, which also just has the, uh, this is the Hall of Eternal Fire on this side, and then the, um, the other side's gonna have another. So, yeah, that's, um, that's, that's most of what's in the base, the base game, and then you have these big Kryptonaut sheets. There we go. Uh, so then for these, you've got these two player aids, three, uh, four player aids. Yeah, they were just kind of stuck together. So four player aids, they're all the same. They've just got uh, general game info, info for the Kryptonauts, and info for the Goddess player aid written on the back. Sort of a, honestly, has almost like a, almost like a purplish, a pinkish tinge to this white. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Yeah, there's like a, there's like a purple almost to this. Uh, um, everything else is black and white, so it feels unintentional, but I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look it doesn't look bad, certainly. Um, but yeah, it's got good info. It's a good player aid. It's got, uh, in, in my experience, playing this, player aid comes in handy quite a lot. And then all of these sheets for the Kryptonauts, uh, of which there are quite a few. There are, uh, like I said, I think 34, 32 or 34 Kryptonauts. Big sheets, pretty thin paper. These aren't like big card stock or anything, or cardboard stock, I should say. They're they are regular card stock. Again, about the same as this, but because they're bigger, they kind of flop around a little more easily. And uh, yeah, each, each each Kryptonaut is gonna have a little standee, as well as a sheet that'll go in front of the player. It has the Kryptonaut stats on it, and then as you upgrade abilities, which I uh, saw those a minute ago. As you get uh, souls in the realm, you upgrade the Kryptonauts by putting these souls on their unclaimed abilities. Uh, and that'll grant you access to different skills, which is how these you sort of customize these as you play. You'll get items that they can use that'll enhance their abilities. And then you can also, you start the game with one ability and then you can get more as you're playing. This isn't like a, a persistent legacy sort of system. I, there is an option for a campaign, but by default it's just, you know, one-off tactical war game uh, between between two sides. And once you, uh, once you upgrade your power, it's there for the game. And then once that game is over, they're all reset. Um, but yeah, there are quite a few. They're all, uh, they're broken up into different classes. So you have like, Spellcaster has a little spell book up here. The engineer has a little cog. Uh, I don't know if they're called engineers. I don't remember their name, but uh, yeah, they all have the same sort of layout. You know, different abilities, different stats. This is like a an uh, icon shorthand for what the ability does. Like this is damage based. This is like health based. Uh, and it, oh, and it says in the bottom too what they're from. So this, these are from the core game. And in the expansion, you'll have dudes. Um, yeah. Uh, that, I think, is everything that comes in the core game. 
So let me go ahead and really sloppily throw this all back in here. Okay, so here's the, uh, the expansion, the Alpha Return expansion. Comes in a box of the same thickness as the core game, but is obviously a little smaller in uh, other dimensions. Okay, a lot less stuff in here, a lot of room. So if you do need to store things in here, you'll be able to. It's got some more cards, I believe. What is it? Does it say in the back what this includes? New content, play through the first mission. Okay, three new goddesses, six new, six new kryptonauts, and the Alpha Return novella. So these cards will be for um, new goddesses. You can see uh, pictures of them on the back here. Three new goddesses. Here's the novella. You wanna you know, read a little bit, get into the lore of the game. It's right here. I know they've put out um, three novellas. One was part of a magazine promotion, a, a Lurker magazine. The second one I think is only in PDF form and then the third one here is uh, in here. Uh, here are new kryptonauts as well as the new goddesses. Here are the goddesses monsters, exact same feeling stock as the core game, which makes sense. Haunted, haunted fools, as I say. Uh, dream moths, ancient monolith, star liches, that's cool. Isn't that a fun guy, star liches. And here are some of the new characters, as well as the, uh, the goddesses. I didn't mention it before, but the goddesses also have a big sheet like this. It just goes this way. Goddesses have their special powers. And sort of a depiction of them on the back. Somnosa, sleepy goddess. She wants to take a nap. And then a couple of punch boards, just two. For the new monsters, the new kryptonauts. And then uh, a couple new pieces. Not a lot to say about that one, just more stuff, which is cool. Uh, not that this game, not, the, not like the core game has a bunch of stuff in it. Maybe the maybe this box will end up being useful. I'll have to see if everything fits, if everything fits in the core box or not. Uh, but from here, we can just move on to, I think this is like the deluxe, the deluxe edition, the deluxe pieces. It's in this bag that came very uh, already punched as an example of how easily these pieces punch out of their uh, punch out of their whatever, their cardboard holders. Everything just sort of falls out. Uh, this is uh, just a few, I think it's four, maybe, four extra kryptonauts. I think this is from the deluxe set. The Mentalist, uh, which we always joke looks like, says so Dentalist. The Ur Priest, just a few dudes. Same stock. Pretty thin, again, pretty, pretty thin. You could certainly get some corners bent up on this. Um, functional, certainly, and I mean, honestly, with the number of kryptonauts that there are in the game, if this was like a thicker stock, it would be like huge. It would take up so much space. So I understand why why you'd want to go with a thinner stock for these. All these dudes, which we can put there. These will certainly fit in the core box. Same uh, same standees as the expansion in the core game, and then it's got these bone dice. Let's go ahead and um, crack these open. These are just D6s that look kind of funny. They look like they're bones. Pretty lightweight. They're not as lightweight as like a 3D printed thing. They have slightly more heft than that, but um, they're unpainted by default. So if you want to be able to see the numbers on them, you have to paint them. You gotta, you gotta get some paint on there. Uh, now I also do know that there is some errata here. One of these sides did not get uh, etched into what, what number it should have. Yeah, the rest of these have like these numbers etched in there, but one side of this does not. Uh, what number is it? What number is missing? Let's see, we've got six. One. One is what's missing, I think. Because that should be the opposite, on the opposite side of the six, right? Let's see, we've got two. 
We've got six. We've got two again. We've got six again. Okay, I see. So the misprint here is actually that it seems to have like only printed twos and sixes. Yeah, I think this is only printed twos and sixes. So these maybe not very usable. Uh, I, I might try for fun to like fill in some of these with maybe some like green stuff. Um, Cause they look neat. Maybe I'll try to make them work. I don't know. Uh, again, they're, they're kind of cool. They're kind of unique. So I might, I don't know what happened there, but they are just pieces of plastic now that can sit around. You can stack maybe if you want to, knock them over. But as far as being dice, they don't, they don't really work. I've got these neoprene player mats cause that is all the rage in board games these days, neoprene. Neoprene's not bad, I don't mind it. You can scratch kind of easily, it can be a pain to store, but when you're actually playing games, they're kind of cool. Ooh, these almost have, these look, these look like velvety. They have like a texture, like a, an image texture printed on them. Uh, so these are for the players, there are four of them. Uh, this is not, this is an extra, this is not like a base game thing. I do not see this fitting in the base game box. But you, um, the goddess, you like, just a place to put your cards. So the goddess would put, you know, her goddess sheet here, her monsters here, cards that she plays over here, discards in this area. Um, these discards don't look, let me see something. Let me take a look at something here. Let's see, it might be too tiny for the cards. No, actually it's not. It is, it is slightly smaller than the cards, but uh, I think you can probably fit three there. So you're playing, you got your cards. Uh, you're gonna, you know, have your face down deck Let's say here, you're gonna discard stuff here, and then you have your don't shuffle cards, which are in here somewhere, that'd be like there. Yeah, that fits fine. They're, they're, they're mostly just short. Um, I don't know if there was some error or if it's by design, but they're a little, uh, they're a little uh, smaller than the actual cards. Don't know if that's the case with these. Uh, yeah, those are a little smaller too. Actually, you know what? What it might be, this like white border, the like white border around this is I think the size of these. But then because there's a little extra room for bleed, that is what like sticks, like kind of sticks out. So if you've got a few of these, they're not gonna line up. You just gotta sort of generally put them in there. And then masteries that you might play, you'd put out, you know, here. So it works. It's it's not like it pushes off the edge or anything. They just don't fit the sort of prescribed boundaries. And then uh, this would be for a goddess would sit right here. So yeah, that's sort of how that that would lay out for the um, for the player playing the goddess. Lay things out there. It's kind of nice. These are actually pretty thick. Uh, but this is going to be for the players, the, um, the the Kryptonaut players, who will put their sheets here. Same deal. It does extend a little bit over the boundaries laid out. I don't know that that's going to be a problem, like in terms of just using space. Like yeah, this you can still fill these out. There's still plenty of room in between. And then for their cards here. Um, but yeah, these are nice. Certainly not necessary. Certainly not something you need to play the game. Um, just kind of a, a way to help you organize a little bit while you're playing. What else was there? Uh, then there is the uh, this bust. This, I believe this is Gorkuk, one of the goddesses. Let's get a little close up of her. There we go. There we go. That's a little better. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, she comes in parts, so you've got this, and then you've got this, uh, this baggie of the rest of the pieces of her that assembles to, like, her face and an arm with, like, a sword and a chalice, uh, and then she mounts up on this, like, wood re and resin, um, plinth, I think is what is it, that's, is that a, I think that's a word. I will, uh, I will certainly paint this up. And this is wood, and this is resin. Uh, yeah, it's it's cool. She looks looks nice. It's good detail. You gotta certainly clean up some of the flash on here, kind of just the excess like plastics. Um, 
which is pretty common when it comes to, you know, kind of high quality models. Uh, this is the way it goes. And then there is uh, also this cassette. This cassette of original music for the game. Uh, I do not have a cassette player, but uh, perhaps I'll have to get one. And uh, you can also listen to it, I believe, on Bandcamp. Yeah, undyingworm.bandcamp.com. You can listen to this. So, got the, got, got a cassette here anyway. Uh, yeah, that's, um, I think that's everything. I think that's it. So I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed checking this out. I'm certainly excited to, to get this to the table and start playing it. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the game. I will, uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.